The King's Chamber, room number 6, was originally used by Kirsten Munk as a sort of living room, but was later converted into an antechamber for the audience room of Frederick III, but is now dedicated to the succeeding king, Christian V. At the time of Christian IV, however, the king had a speaking tube installed, so he could communicate with Kirsten Munk from the other end of the castle, in private, more or less. As a rule of thumb in this castle, most of the ceilings have been either redesigned or simply moved to another room. And this is also true for the very beautiful painting in the ceiling of this room. Some sources claim that it fits perfectly in the first room as the silver lining for the sound channels. Others would have it originally placed in the long hall. Normally when people see Christian V for the first time, they're struck by his rather unimpressive looks and not least his very large nose. Of course, some of this impression is due to the fashion of the days, white powdered faces, makeup and colourful clothing, but no matter how you try to address it, he wasn't exactly a natural beauty. In fact, this picture may have even been a very generous depiction of him when you compare it to other oil sketches from the time. You can judge for yourself if you go to the corner of the room where Christian V's death mask stands on top of his hunchback torso. This gives a more three-dimensional view of the king and of course gives us an impression of his afflicted body. At times his health crippled him to such a degree that he had to use a wheelchair, occasionally supported by his queen on their walks in what is now the king's garden. As Christian V's medical history will show, he was sick from time to time, but he was still completely fascinated by everything concerning martial arts, be it war or hunting. So fascinated, in fact, that he had an entire village moved in order to clear his hunting grounds from any disturbing elements and unwanted attention. Some even claim that he died from a wound inflicted by a deer, causing internal bleeding. The kitchen was originally in the basement, but was later moved outside in a smaller building just next to the castle, hereby contributing to the longevity of the 400-year-old castle by minimizing the risk of fire. Another risk was of course the many fireplaces scattered around the castle which further justified the lavish silver fire dogs who functioned as sort of a fireplace fence. They did serve another purpose though. Since they were made of silver they absorbed the heat from the fireplace radiating heat more efficiently, sort of like a modern day heater. Another aspect of keeping warm can be found on the walls, more specifically the tapestries. Other than being very fashionable, they might have been practical installations to further insulate the castle. 